Welcome to Auburn Ave, aka Sweet Auburn, home to Martin Luther King and a number of civil rights activists. A place where Blacks in the early 1900s not only were successful, but made a huge impact in the progression of Black life in Atlanta. Today we're going to explore the history of Auburn Ave and current Black-owned businesses that are still here today. I'm your host, Sakasa, and this is Black Unicorn. This historic part of downtown Atlanta was once one of the richest black streets in the world. But it didn't start off this way. Due to the 1906 race riots, white flight, and Jim Crow laws, blacks were confined to this downtown area as well as Old Fourth Ward. During the early 1900s, Auburn Ave started to develop into the mecca for blacks. The street was nicknamed Sweet Auburn by John Wesley Dobbs, the unofficial mayor of the district and civic leader. The street was filled with doctors, drugstores, beauty shops, dry cleaners, banks, restaurants, hotels, nightclubs, and more. A lot of homes were built in Queen Anne Victorian style, which for many Blacks symbolized success. But success was nothing without community. People like Alice T. Francis helped Blacks by operating an unemployment agency from 1937 until 1949. Melvin Boykin, a longtime resident, said, You know, if you were out and you were playing with a group of kids in the neighborhood and someone called you for dinner, everybody went and everybody ate. It didn't matter whether you lived there or not. You were a member of that family. Unfortunately, Sweet Auburn's decline started in the mid-1960s. With many parts of Georgia desegregating, many business owners and residents moved to places that they weren't able to move to before. Also, reconstruction of the Atlanta Expressway cut through the heart of Sweet Auburn and tore down places between Bell and 4th Street, forcing many residents and businesses out of their homes. When you hear of Auburn Ave, you will most likely be pointed in the direction of the Martin Luther King National Historical Park. This park includes Martin Luther King's birth home, fire station number six, which was the first integrated fire station in Atlanta, the visitor center, the King Center, and the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church. But there are also hidden gems on and around Auburn Ave that you should check out, like the Brian Graves House, located at 522 Auburn Ave. This is the home of Reverend Peter James Bryan, pastor at the Wheat Street Baptist Church and associate editor at the Voice of the Negro Literary Magazine. And later, Antoine Graves, a successful real estate agent that successfully helped Blacks integrate Atlanta's West Side, also lived there. Across the street was the Bryant Preparatory Institute, located at 533 Auburn Ave. Sylvia Bryant, wife of Reverend Peter James Bryant, opened a five-room school over a grocery store. Mr. and Mrs. Bryant, along with two other teachers, had an enrollment of 175 students when it opened in 1910. Public schools at the time were segregated and only extended to eighth grade for Black people. Mrs. Bryant's schools, along with other private academies, provided Blacks such as Martin Luther King Sr. with an opportunity for higher education. Located next to the Institute is the Harper House, located at 535 Auburn Ave. Charles Lincoln Harper was an educator and a civic leader who helped overturn Atlanta's segregation policies. And as principal of Booker T. Washington High School, Harper instituted numerous vocational and college prep courses. 
He also served as the first executive secretary of the Black Georgia Teachers and Education Association and as president of the Atlanta NAACP chapter. As you move further down Auburn Ave, you'll see Cox Brothers Funeral Home, located at 380 Auburn Ave. Known for their elegant decor, this funeral home was founded by Emily Cox and her two sons, Charles and Alan. It was originally located on Pryor Street, but moved to Auburn Ave in 1940. A couple doors down is the Hogerbrook's Funeral Home, located at 364 Auburn Ave. Started with only $300, Spellman alumni Geneva Hogerbrooks opened the funeral home in 1929. It operated for nearly a century and turned into a million dollar business. She also contributed, raised funds, and was active in organizations such as the Atlanta Negro Voters League, the NAACP, and Wheat Street Baptist Church, earning the nickname Mama Hogabrooks. To all my cigar lovers out there, make sure you stop by Havana Cigars, located at 376 Auburn Ave. This chill spot has been open since 2016 and is family owned and operated. They serve coffee and specialize in Cuban seed cigars. These cigars are small batches, grown, aged, and prepared the classic Cuban way. Another famous church on Auburn Ave is the Wheat Street Baptist Church, located at 359 Auburn Ave. This church was founded in 1869 by a small group of parishioners of the First Baptist Church, presently known as Friendship Baptist Church, and has been open for 150 years. The first location was on Howe Street, but the church moved to their current location in the 1920s after the Great Atlanta Fire of 1917 burned down the previous building. After the Civil War, the church ran a home for elderly women a school for laborers, and even hosted cultural events and entertainment productions. The church also established one of the first black church credit unions in 1956 and the Wheat Street Charitable Foundation, which provided affordable rental and single family homes. Pastors have been active in politics, education, and civil rights struggles. Notable pastors are William Henry Tillman, Peter James Bryant, J. Raymond Henderson, William Holmes Borders, Michael Neely Harris, and Ralph Watkins. If you're looking for some good breakfast food, check out the Atlanta Breakfast Club located at 340 Auburn Ave. This modern breakfast restaurant is owned by Anthony Sanders and Osiris Ballard. When I went there, I had the Georgia peach, where you got two chicken breasts, Belgian waffles, warm peach cobbler, and a buttery shortbread crumble. Mm. So go check it out. Located at 330 Auburn Ave is the Prince Hall Masonic Temple. Prince Hall was an abolitionist, a leader in the free black community in Boston, and the founder of Black Freemasonry. This temple was built in 1937 by Atlanta's Black Masonic Lodge headed by John Wesley Dobbs. This was the headquarters to the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, Martin Luther King's office, Word Radio, and Madam C.J. Walker's hair salon. The SCLC, established by Dr. King and other civil rights activists, opened its doors in the Prince Hall Temple in the 1960s. It played a pivotal role in organizing the March on Washington in 1963 and campaigns to help pass the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act. Notable members include Ralph David Abernathy, Joseph Lowry, Fred Shuttleworth, and Bayard Rustin. Right next door is the SCLC Women's Building. The Women's Chapter was founded by Evelyn G. Lowry. They addressed issues of social action, community, and economic development. They also emphasized women's issues, children's need, heritage pride, political awareness, health and welfare, and education. Even though majority of the businesses are not in the Prince Hall building anymore, 
you can always visit the Madam C.J. Walker's Beauty Museum, located at 54 Hilliard Street. This museum was preserved by Ricky DeForest, and it was one of the last licensed Madam C.J. Walker beauty salons. You can also see the history of the first Black-owned and operated radio station called Word Radio. Not only did they play music such as gospel, jazz, and blues, it also promoted civil rights events, community health programs, Black entertainers and churches, and provided a medium for Black-owned businesses to advertise. On the corner of Auburn Ave and Fourth Street, you can find the John Wesley Dobbs sculpture. John Wesley Dobbs was the unofficial mayor of Auburn Ave. He attended Morehouse College, formerly Atlanta Baptist College. In 1911, he was initiated into the Prince Hall Masons. In 1914, he became Grand Warden. And finally, in 1932, he became Grand Master of the Prince Hall Masons until his death in 1960. He also formed the Atlanta Negroes Voters League in 1946, organizing over 18,000 votes in just 51 days, enough to convince Mayor Hartsfield to hire eight black police officers. On the other side of the street, you'll see the John Wesley Dobbs and Maynard Jackson mural. Maynard Jackson was the first black mayor of Atlanta and served three terms between 1973 to 1994 and is also the grandson of John Wesley Dobbs. At 29 Bell Street, you can see the old location of the Joseph and Evelyn Lowry Institute for Justice and Human Rights. The Institute, which was established in 2001, relocated to the Thomas Cole Building on the campus of Clark Atlanta University. Programs include Boys to Men Mentor Program, Forums on Criminal Justice, Agents of Change Fellowship Program, and many more. Powell's Lounge is located at 254 Auburn Ave. Originally, the site was the location of the first Black-owned hotel called the European Hotel in the late 1890s. Family owned and operated, this legendary blues bar has been a staple in the sweet Auburn community for over 40 years. They play all types of music from hip hop to funk to disco and much more. Tune in next week for part two of Historical Auburn Ave.